feel like he didn't have that jersey at Genesis. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to give it up regardless. So, yeah, I know that, like, before this, if you watch Genesis, we were calling that man Atelier because we didn't. We were just reading it. So we got the actual pronunciation. It is Atelier. So get it. Uh, yeah, let's, all, let's all learn it together, okay? Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, Atelier. <laughs> um, and a lot of the Japanese players did not exactly perform to what they were expecting at Genesis. So it's kind of nice that they have another super major immediately after to kind of acclimate themselves with the, to the time shift mm -hmm. and just play again and see what, and really show us what they're made of. All right, man. So here we are into our uh, our first match between them. So this is a character, obviously, that MKLeo should know a lot about. He did have to play against Tweak in a, quite a few battles uh, earlier into this, um, you know, in Ultimate's career. And like, obviously, you know, there's still uh, PTs around. But obviously, Atorie might be of a different caliber. So we're going to see what he can bring to the table. Had a decent Squirtle combination going for him. And I like the fact that he is willing to go out here and try to get these uh, edge guards if he's going to go low against MKLeo. Yeah, that's um really, really just boating well for Torier just because a lot of people are afraid to go off. Oh, wait. I was going to say a lot of people were afraid to go off stage versus MK Leo, and maybe that's why. He didn't go off stage willingly right there, but MK Leo capitalizing off that first opening. Yeah, I feel like in this matchup in particular, or like honestly any matchup where, yeah, you are kind of afraid about AL up being you, I think like before like 40%, it's probably all right. But that's after fair. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think about going off stage anymore because if I get spiked for, that, uh, for death for trying to get this KO, I'm going to be mad. I mean, the, the other thing is, even if you stay on stage, if you keep using Squirtle, Squirtle's really, really light out. I like True. the switch right there, you know, because Violet hits so hard. And I think Squirtle might have died to that, actually. Uh, honestly, <laughs> he might need another swap right now. He's having a uh, hard time getting off the ledge. And again, getting hit with another up air. This Ivysaur has finally hit the ground after about 18 seconds of air time. This is <laughs> This is the new air, Jordan, but for the wrong reason. Oh, yeah. This one seems to me we can actually get himself a W here. Okay. Get himself a... Uh, Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I was like, definitely going to take that. The skydive neutral layer is going to get that first stock. But it's already got. I like that. The, the fearlessness of trying to go for that parry. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We the, tried. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'd rather, I'd rather get hit and die or go for the parry and look like a god. But uh, uh, luckily for him, MK Leo just missed. Didn't get the stock right after, though. Yeah, and MK Leo's throwing out these up smashes, but they're, they're kind of going unpunished. Which uh, is just kind of a testament to how good MK Leo is, knowing that he can do a move like that and his opponent is not going to be ready for it. Okay. Put you there. So, yeah, man. Uh, I love the pressure. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely doing it up here on the side. Hasn't been able to get too much of the Squirtle stuff that you like come to know and love off the of Squirtle's low percent F tilts. Um, but he has been at least going for them. Squirtle's F tilt actually goes insane. Okay. Yeah. Switch to the Ivy Sword. The only character so far that has managed to take stock. Oh, but I don't know how I don't know how you come back. MKLA was so good off stage, going so deep and still makes it back. Okay. Yeah, they're both over here having to play the, the fake out game with the tethers. But we're gonna make it back one more time, Ivysaur. Trying to get another fake. That's gonna be stocks for sure, right? Yeah. Man. Dude, that, that down tilt sent hits so from good. so far, bro. <laughs> it's so good. And it, and it, it sucks especially a lot because of the fact Ivysaur loves his little upbeat trick. Hey, I'll re-grab and you really have to be afraid of me. But no, MKLeo's like, I'll just back up, down tilt. Man. Easy. Hold on. Like that. Easy what? for Leo. Like, how far back was that actually, bro? Just, let me go back to that other one. Here we go. How far back was that? It, it looked like it was it, even roll range. It was very. It was very. Yeah, I feel like he was definitely in roll range. Okay. He was slowing it down a little bit. As he gets off the ledge. He steps back like if he was looking for a roll. Okay. He reached forward. He might. I feel like he still got hit even if he didn't uh, do his own down tilt. But yeah. Yeah, regardless. I, I, like, watching that again in slow-mo, um, it kind of just makes it so much more, uh, I guess, calculated by Leo because he jumped first, and a lot of players like to jump from the ledge. Yeah. So you see your opponent jump, you're like, oh, well, let me do a neutral get-up because you're clearly trying to board air or something of that nature. And MK Leo's like, no, it's a bait the whole time. Man. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 like, really wondering if, like, did he actually parry that throw at the timing? But either way. Man, yeah, that was that was he was living life on the edge for sure. So here we are in game two with the Dreamland theme playing. Okay, like that. Oh, Fountain of Dreams. Yeah, another fantastic start for Leo. I mean, it was looking a little bit better for Torier as the match was progressing. Of course, that first stock was a doozy, but it, it does bode well for him in the sense that, like, hey, you made a couple adjustments. He's the best of five. There is some hope for you. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> MK Leo adjusted as well apparently. 82 to 26 is uh, not a good position to be in his PT. I'm telling you, man, if you can't avoid the neutral layer from MKLeo, you just automatically lose. He, he, everything that he does off the neutral layer is, like, so optimal all the time. 
Okay. Oh. That's kind of like the Bruce Lee. I don't fear the man that knows a thousand punches. Fear the man that knows how to down tilt and neutral air. Yeah, it's like I know. I fear the man who knows how to do this one punch a thousand weights. It's like, all right, boom, nice a little back air action. Gonna try to swap it up, see if we can get a stock here. Definitely good idea. It is kind of hard. I, th I think it's kind of hard to catch these type of recoveries from each other because they pull For up sure. so quickly. Uh, but also, just by some recovery, that tether is very long. Jeez. I mean, you've said it already. If you can't avoid the neutral air, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. Atoria does put himself on the board, though. Does manage to seal that stock. Very similar to the last game, though, unfortunately. You're trailing by quite a bit, and you're reading the roll in with the neutral B. Just coverage. Bro, I'm telling you, man. When they had us play these, uh, all of us play uh, KLAO at Summit to try to just get a stock. I was like, bro, I'm not even embarrassed, bro. This happens to everybody. Like, yeah. <laughs> this happens to literally everybody, man. It's, it's hard to get a stock on him, regardless of who you are. Here we go. Ooh. Okay. Open is coming in from Atorier. Neutral air. Or actually went the other way. Probably expect him to go in this time around. Oh, we've seen this before. The down tilt. Yeah, this is almost how it ended last time. Great swap right there, though, from Atorier. And, like, with the, I mean, he's got a lot of raids, so that's wonderful. He probably could sneak in a back air kill somewhere in here, but it's just the fact that you still. Oh, never mind. That's the second roll in, by the way. Second roll in, second yeah. down tilt up air finish as well. That just with, the, with like perfect spacing on the down tilt one more time. No How does he do it? How does he do it, folks? Damn, it's so good. <laughs> like, how did he do it again? I mean, we practiced a thousand times, clearly. Yeah, that's right. You know? That's right. Oh, 210. There we go. Let me go. Boom. Look at this. Oh, you walking right back. Bro, shock that lizard, bro. He's like, the spacing. Oh. <laughs> Anime pose real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I had him defeated. <laughs> Nani? Oh, my. <laughs> Let's, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and get into to game three. Uh, Tori eight. just having a rough time against MKLeo, but who wouldn't? You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's really hard to say even what you do at this point. A lot of times, it's maybe you should grab more, maybe you should slow it down. But MK Leo just really seems to have an answer at every single turn. And I mean, Nair is one of the answers, and I just really don't know the solution for PT to deal with that at the moment. It's crazy how good he makes his Nair look. I mean, just off the fact, you know, the the, the Nair in itself is already uh, pretty good for like where it launches you. But the idea of having a, a, a Nair that has a landing hitbox or a non landing uh, hitbox, you know, mix up. It's always going to be like one you have to worry about, as well as just blocking the move in general. So for sure. this man in Kaleo was just, you know, he saw that and was like, yeah, that's for me. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a Smash 4 Mewtwo's, how they would use Nair nonstop. Um, and it just led to everything that was potent that Mewtwo had access to. Um, and clearly MK Leo is just practicing that Nair and having so many just openings from it, just so many killing blows. He's like, whether I'm comboing you for 30% or I'm taking your stock at 80. Okay. Sending them back. It's Carter saying, nope, I'm going to opt for safe control. Yeah, I thought maybe we were going to see something from Atorie right there after that down yeah. air connected, but uh, a little hesitant on pulling the trigger. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you can't hang up there for too long, man. Mkaleo will definitely go for it, but Atorie with a way better uh, start here. Unfortunately, that up is not going to hit back to the Squirtle. Maybe you can get an F-Tilt jab lock or something. Uh, uh, it's a little hard pressed to get to get Mkaleo to not tech, though. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, good DI out. Smart, better option for sure. Oh, that was Ooh. clean. Okay. Basically that close and note, recognizing that you got to go for an up air right there is not the easiest task. And then surprisingly, uh, the first lead a Torrey has had, I mean, it was short-lived, but it was a lead nonetheless. Hey, got to give it up to him. Definitely uh, got something going for him. Oh, see, now that, in this situation, he I think he was checkmated. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, you're, you're, you're on Squirtle. So the back air is going to kill you, the down air is going to kill you. Like, you just kind of, that was probably the worst time to be spoiled. And he kept always DI'ing the, to avoid the down air. So good recognition by MK Leo to say, hey, let me go for back air this time instead. All right. Scoop. Again, all right, going to get the back air for free. You got to change that DI now. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Two tap. Oh, oh good stuff. Are we going to drop down for the nair? Oh, oh. didn't want to commit. I mean, I understand you're on your last stock. But, man, oh, that man. nair could have done it. Oh, uh, throwing the other way, but I like that. He was willing, uh, willing to just kind of hang out there for a little bit. MK Leo, kind of scare him away from the stage, gets him yet again with the five whip through the stage. Good awareness by Atorie. He actually tried to throw that Razor Leaf predicting the jump, even though it was a little early for it. 
go. Okay, I mean, it's jumping. I'm trying to get up himself out the corner, but it is 103 to 112. With the oh, goodbye. Wow. What a page. That first attack was not even meant to actually hit a Torque. It was just like, hey, I actually want you in this position for the spike from the up B. MK Leo, so good at what he does. Just and, and you can definitely tell oh. almost everybody who's gotten grabbed here has they've definitely tried to get back onto the stage, but it's always just slightly off, bouncing on the stage instead of actually hitting uh, the ground. So or bouncing on the side of the stage that actually hit the ground. But yeah, man, another kind of dominant display of Vilef right here. Twice got him with the same up B, and then yeah, that of course that uh that uh, back air kill on the left side from Squirtle would have, would have been the third stock. This is a cool stock too, though. Yeah, that was really really clean. Yeah, that is that is. Yeah, once you, once you get hit by that, it's always attackable. So if you don't land on the stage, you're pretty much dead. Or, um, like, if you don't die immediately at the at the bottom, like, if it's not that strong, you might be able to do it if you're high up enough. But for the most part, you get grabbed by that, you're gone. Yeah, Damn. I love watching MK Leo's facial expressions while he plays. Because mm. he's one of the players that just looks so calm the whole time. Just, yeah, okay. A lot of people are in it to it. And, you know, just MK Leo just been doing it so long, so composed. It's almost like home to him. I feel like, yeah, at this point in time, I mean, like, all the all the amazing plays that other people would do would be popping off, and Kaleo was like, yeah, I just do that.